This experience happened in April 2011. At that time, I was working in a sales executive position in my company. Our company was mainly dealing with fitness equipment. We were experiencing a serious decline in performance, which added to the pressure on me. As a sales executive, I had more responsibility. I needed to make sure that the members of the sales team were motivated. Due to increased competition in the market and changes in consumer buying preferences, our sales volume dropped dramatically. This posed a challenge to our company. This state of work began to affect the quality of my sleep. I often lost sleep at night and lay in bed repeatedly thinking about how to improve my performance. At the same time, I also had doubts about my own abilities. I reflected on my decisions and actions and worried about my ability to perform in this position. I decided to go to the hospital in hopes of alleviating my anxiety and insomnia. After listening to my symptoms, my doctor prescribed me some mood-stabilizing medication. I told the doctor, I occasionally have allergic reactions to medications. He laughed and said that the dose I was taking was so small that there could not be any side effects. The doctor told me to take the medication regularly every day. When I got home, I took my medications every day as the doctor had asked me to, hoping that they would help me. Over the next few days, I took three tablets of the medication on time every day, as my doctor had recommended. On the third day, I had some stomach discomfort and I felt a little tired and sluggish. That night, I was getting ready to go to bed. Within 10 minutes, I started to feel some difficulty in breathing. I felt like something was blocking my nose and I couldn't open my mouth. The difficulty in breathing made me feel very panicky and uncomfortable. I realized that I had a serious problem with my airway and it was getting worse. I tried to cough hard but to no avail. I started to experience dizziness. Suddenly, all my discomfort disappeared. I appeared in another place, and many spirits appeared around me. We walked together toward a large door. The gate was tall and stately, made of a softly glowing golden material. The door was carved with intricate and beautiful designs. I saw many others lined up behind me, ready to enter that gate. After entering the gate, I entered a reception room. The reception room had no ceiling. The room was softly lit and warm. I noticed that this reception room did not have fixed walls, but was made of cloud-like substances. These clouds emitted white light. They formed various shapes of chairs. I chose a chair and sat down. It was soft and comfortable, as if it had merged into my body. Sitting on it, I felt a feeling of lightness. This reception room was a place for souls to connect and communicate with each other without the constraints of time and space. I noticed two boys walking in. When I first saw them, I suddenly knew the cause of their death. They had lost their lives because of a serious car accident. In this place, everyone is no longer distinguished by appearance and wealth, everyone is equal. Here, no one is labeled as a good or bad person, and there is no difference between rich and poor. Everyone is gathered in this place. I began to connect with other souls and share each other's stories and feelings. Even though we come from different backgrounds and lives, we can all get along as equals here. In communicating with other souls, I began to reflect on my own actions and choices in life. In this waiting room, I felt a wisdom and tolerance that transcended the boundaries of reality. A young lady came up to us with beautiful eyes. She sang a moving song and her voice was very infectious. The song expressed a deep emotion that made me feel inner peace. After a while, we gathered in a larger, 
brighter room. Everyone was talking and getting to know each other. The scene reminded me of the atmosphere in the high school cafeteria. I saw a man appear in the room. He exuded a unique aura. I could feel his wisdom. As if he was our teacher or guide. This man helped us to better understand and explore this new world. He shared wisdom about life. His words exude a gentle power. In my encounter with this man, I learned more about my own heart and potential. He reminded me that the true meaning of life is to connect with others and to bring joy and help to others. In talking with him alone, I learned that he was once a pastor. He died in a car accident. When I was with him, his humility spoke to me deeply. He explained to me that many people had come here because of suicide or accidental death. His explanation confused me. He went on to explain to me that in this world, all kinds of behaviors that could lead to death are considered suicide. Such actions could be drug use, drunk driving, all considered suicides, to some extent. This does not mean that these people will be punished or condemned, here they are accepted and understood. This made me start thinking about the meaning of life and death. Here we are given a more tolerant and compassionate perspective and are able to better understand the pain that each person is experiencing. Here, no one is blamed because everyone has their own story and distress. It made me realize that in the real world, we should also be more tolerant and caring of others. Reaching out to those in distress can help them get rid of suicidal thoughts and give them new hope. My mentor told me that his mission is to help this group of people find their way in life again. Some people must prove their inner strength by going through hardships. These experiences temper them and make them stronger. There are people who are born experiencing hunger and disease. They struggle with suffering all their lives until the day they pass away. These people will receive what they deserve after they die. During my interaction with my mentor, he reviewed my life. I realized that I had hurt many people with my past actions. At work, I often lost my temper with my subordinates and did not have a forgiving heart toward others. My biggest problem is my inability to forgive others for their faults. I can feel the feelings of people around me. Every little action I take has an impact on the people around me. Every action I take. God is watching at all times. I recognize the importance of forgiveness. Finally, my mentor reminded me that now was the time to make a choice. He did not force me to have to return to earth. I gazed at him with an inner conflict. With tears in my eyes, I told him that I did not want to go back to earth. My mentor listened carefully to my confession and then told me that if I could accept what happened next, I could choose to stay here. I looked to my right and saw the scene below. My mother was sitting on the edge of her bed in the bedroom. Her expression was full of frustration and helplessness. Her body was becoming weaker and weaker, and she seemed to be in great pain. She didn't have the energy she used to have. There was a heavy atmosphere in the air. Her face was pale. This scene made me feel painful. I wanted to comfort and help her. I longed to be able to bear part of her pain and give her warmth and comfort. This scene touched the softest part of my heart. I cried and said, Will you come back with me? I want you to be by my side to give me guidance. The mentor replied, I cannot be with you all the time, but God's love will always be by your side. His answer gave me relief. I decided to return to earth and continue my journey in life. I thanked my mentor for the teachings he gave me. With determination and hope, I was ready to return to the real world and try to become a kinder person. The light around me started to become blurred. 
I felt a strong current pass through my body, and then I began to descend rapidly. When I got back to my room, I tried many times, but could not get back into my body. This feeling of separation made me feel very uneasy. My husband was sleeping next to me, and I was able to see him clearly. I tried to reconnect with my body, but no matter how hard I tried, I could not succeed. I tried to wake my husband, hoping he would help me. I clung to his shoulders, but he seemed unaware of my presence. I didn't know how to solve this problem. And my mood became more and more desperate. At that moment, my mentor appeared in the room. He told me that the entrance was between my two eyes. Although I didn't understand the reason for this, I kept trying. Eventually, I managed to get back into my own body. When I woke up, I took a deep breath. My husband woke up with a start at the sound and he asked me what had happened. Although my eyes were still tightly closed, I could see the look of horror on his face. He called out my name and shook my body in an attempt to wake me up. In the process, I felt an electric current begin to move through my skin. I could feel the presence of my body, and my eyes slowly opened. I saw my husband watching me, his expression full of concern and surprise. After a few minutes, my husband was ready to call the emergency services. I stopped him and told him I felt fine now and didn't need help. I just wanted to sit down and rest for a while. He helped me to the couch and poured me a glass of water. Although I wanted to tell him what I had just been through, I couldn't find the right words to express it. The next morning, I woke up feeling full of energy and vitality in my body. This experience made me re-examine the meaning and purpose of my life. I began to appreciate each day and to be grateful for every good moment in my life. I decided to treat others in a more forgiving and kind way. I learned the power of forgiveness, which can not only help others, but also liberate myself. We all experience different challenges and trials, and these experiences shape the trajectory of our unique lives. A year later, I shared a part of my experience with my husband. Although he couldn't fully understand what I was going through, his understanding of me made me feel overwhelmed with happiness and warmth. 